Oh, thank you. Let's get started. Welcome uh, to today's uh, HO colloquium. Today we're very happy to have Dr. Uh, Navdeep uh, Panasar from uh, uh, University of uh, Alabama. And uh, uh, Navdeep received her master's degree in astronomy and space physics from uh, Punjabi University in India. And uh, uh, last year, her PhD from Göttingen University and the Max Planck Institute for Solar Physics in Germany and uh, working on the quiescent prominence using SDO and steroid data. And she's currently a postdoc fellow at the Center for Space Plasma and uh, Aeronomic Research, CSPAR, uh, at the University of uh, uh, Alabama, Huntsville. Uh, today, he's, she's going to talk about prominence. Thank you very much. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to talk about the structure and dynamics of uh, quiescent prominences. Solar prominences are spectacular features on Sun. They have been investigated for many years, but their structure, dynamics, and formation mechanism is not still fully understood. When I started my PhD, fortunately, SDO was launched in the same year, and Stereo was already observing the Sun. So I got an opportunity to study prominences which were observed by SDO, and simultaneously they were seen as filaments from Stereo. So I combined the observations from two different directions and studied the 3D structure of solar prominences. Here is the outline of my talk. First of all, I will give you a brief introduction about solar prominences. And then I will show you the observations of uh, polychron prominence and tornado-like prominence. Uh, these two works I have done during my PhD at Max Planck. And then in third part of my talk, I will uh, show you a prominence filament eruption, uh, which is triggered by a series of eight homologous eruption. And at the end, summary of my talk. So my talk is divided into uh, three parts. First of all, starting with the introduction, what are solar prominences? Prominences mainly consist of relatively cool and dense plasma, which is supported against gravity and embedded in the lower density hotter solar corona. These are the two different images of prominences. They are known as prominences when they are seen above the solar limb, like this peak structure. And they are called as filaments when they are seen on the solar disk, like here, this ribbon-like structure. These both have the same features, but their different names depend upon their observed properties. Prominences usually lie along the Palatian region lines. Here, this is the H alpha image, and here is the filament. This red dashed line roughly outlines the uh, magnetic Palatian region line of this filament. Palatian region line is the line which separates the region of two opposite polarities. Here we can see positive and negative polarity. There are many cl classifications of prominences, but they are mainly of two types, active region prominences and quiescent prominences. Active region prominences are those which are found around the active part of the sun, for example, sunspots here, this big structure here, this is a prominence, active region prominence. And quiescent prominences are those which are found in the quiet sun between the dispersed active region boundaries, like here, this is a quiescent prominence. Uh, quiescent, oh sorry, active region prominences are uh, very dynamic, they are short-lived, they can survive from a few minutes to a few days, uh, whereas quiescent prominences are long-lived, they can survive from several days to several months. They are very stable. One can easily study their structures and flows along them. When quiescent prominences are seen at the higher latitude of the sun, like here, here, and create a, a crown-like structure at the polar regions of the sun, they are known as polar crown prominences. Sometimes they also appear as a, a dense row of pillars, like this, that can partly or fully cover the uh, polar regions of the sun. Prominences usually seen along the coronal cavities. Here, we can see. Coronal cavity is a region of low dense plasma uh, above the prominence uh, below the coronal arcade. This blue is the coronal arcade, and here this helical black line is the prominence, and in between there is a coronal cavity. Uh, now I will uh, show you uh, about uh, flux drop model for the prominence formation. Many of you may be already familiar with this. Uh, this is the uh, uh, flux drop model for the formation of prominences by one Balihuan. In this model, initially, they assume that there is a set of field lines that are more or less potential to the Palatian region line. This dashed one is the Palatian region line. And then due to the uh, differential rotation on the sun, these field lines get displaced along the Palatian region line, but in the opposite directions. Here we can see. 
and then due to the shear flow, foot points come closer here at this point, uh, and they reconnect like here in between BC, which results in the formation of new loops. This shorter loop BC and then longer loop AD. Similarly, there are other loops. Uh, they may also reconnect and result in the formation of uh, some new loops, which wraps around the uh, existing loop and forms a helical structure that carries the plasma high into the corona. This is a flux linkage model. It's an extension of the flux rock model. Uh, this is uh, similar to the uh, flux rock model. The only difference is that in this model, they assume there are two bipoles, unconnected bipole. One is at the lower latitude of the sun, and another one is the higher latitude of the sun. Oh, I forgot to mention this model is for the formation of longer chain of filaments, for example, polytron filaments. And then due to the flux convergence and cancellation at the polarity inversion line here at this position, uh, they uh, uh, which results in the highly sheared field at the polarity inversion line, and then this process is going on. After so many repetition of this process, it forms a long helical structure that can we can see at the polar region of the sun like this. So that's all for the introduction, and uh, now I will show you observation of uh, polychron prominence. A small polychron prominence was observed by the STO on. 13th February 2011 on the northwest solar limb of the sun here at this position. Uh, during this event, Stereo A spacecraft was observing the sun from this direction. Uh, separation angle between both these spacecraft was nearly 90 degrees, so this prominence appeared on the northern hemisphere of the sun from Stereo A images. We combined the observations from uh, two directions and studied the event in detail. From STU, we mainly used uh, 304, 171, and 193 uh, data sets, and from Stereo, 195. Uh, these are the two different views of the uh, polychron prominence. The right one is the uh, three color STU image. Uh, we can see prominence is here on the northwest solar limb, and the left one is the stereo image. As we can see, prominence. Uh, Sorry, filament is not clearly visible on the disk images. So, our one of the important and difficult tasks was to find out the exact location of the filament on the disk images. For this, first of all, we uh, take out the, all the STO images at exact time of the stereo images because uh, stereo has a lower temporal cadence uh, with respect to STO. And after that, uh, we derotate the stereo images to a particular time so that we can easily locate some of the features at same times. And then we superimposed the STO grid lines on the stereo images uh, so that we can locate the STO limb line. Like here, this is the STO limb line here, and these all grid lines are same. And then after uh, this, uh, we correlate some of the common brightenings in both the images at same time. Some of them I marked here, like this brightening is appeared here, and this one is here near to the prominence this closer to the limb, this one. And then we came to uh, know about the exact location of the filament on the disk images that it appeared between 60 to 75 degree latitude here. This black box outlined the region of uh, filament system which we analyzed for two days. And from the uh, STO images, we removed the average coronal background to enhance the visibility of prominence plasma and coronal cavity. Uh, this is the zoom in view of the prominence filament system, uh, stereo here, uh, left one, and this is the two color STO image. Brown is for 304 and blue is for 171. With the combination of these two wavelengths, we can see the connection through the corona. So that's why we made these images. Uh, uh, from stereo images, we mainly identified uh, three prominence pillars uh, here, F1, which is here on STO, and then F2, this one. F3 here, and a uh, few sites of common brightenings. One of them is shown here, B1, which is uh, appear here due to the projection in front of prominence pillar. Uh, this is the STO limb line, sorry, I forget to mention here, this dashed one. In between these two prominence pillars, F1 and F2, we've noticed a, a dark region, which does not show any kind of activity, this dark region. So we were not uh, sure that this darkening is due to the uh, prominence plasma or due to the low density region. To distinguish between uh, prominence darkening and this darkening, uh, we created a time series image uh, along this long dotted dashed line here. This is the uh, running difference time series image along this line. 
Uh, at the position of pillar F1, here this one, we observed continuous brightenings and dimmings, we can see. In this dark region here, there is no activity, we can see. Uh, and at the, except the edge of this uh, bright region here, there is continuous brightenings. And at the position of pillar F2, we can see plasma is moving in and out in, from this pattern. And there are some weak flows uh, which are moving from B2 to F2. So, uh, but there are no flows uh, which moves from B2 to F1, it's, which suggests that these two regions are magnetically disconnected. Uh, we noticed that the microfarring at the foot point of pillar F1 produced uh, up flows, uh, which we can see from these 171 images. And these flows rises and stop suddenly at the sharp edge in the corona, this sharp edge. And this edge highlights the boundary of coronal cavity here. And this coronal cavity region coincides with this dark region on the stereo disk images. This suggests that this darkening is uh, due to the uh, low density plasma rather than the uh, prominence plasma. Uh, this is a, a disk signature of uh, coronal cavity. To investigate the flows along the uh, prominence, uh, we calculate the velocities. In this movie, we can see there are nice sharp upflows in the prominence pillar, which are itself very interesting in case of polychron prominences because generally they contain um, downflows. Uh, so we uh, take a cut along this first uh, F1 pillar. This is a running difference image along this um, cut here. And these red lines uh, represent the uh, sharp upflows. These flows are moving uh, with an average velocity of 15 kilometers per second. These uh, uh, upflows have been triggered by the heating, uh, which we observed from the stereo images at the base of the uh, F1 pillar here, these ones. So um, according to injection model, uh, heating may drive the plasma upwards. So we think uh, these uh, upflows are due to the uh, these heating, uh, which is at the foot point of the pillar F1. Similar pattern of upflow have been observed uh, next to two in this prominence pillar, F1. Uh, there was a small scale eruption in the filament system. Uh, this eruption uh, does not uh, produce any changes in the filament system, but it uh, produced a small EUV wave followed by a dimming. Here we can see, and later on, this dimming is clearly visible on either side of the coronal cavity. To see the magnetic structure of the prominence filament system, we looked into the line of sight uh, HMI maps, magnetograms, when this uh, prominence system was on the SDO disk uh, seven days earlier. Uh, here is the uh, HMI maps, and this is 171 SDO image. This white box outlines the region of uh, filament system, which we analyzed on stereo images. As we can see, this whole system coincides with a very low magnetic flux. Uh, to the south of this filament channel, there is a, a diffuse active region flux, and uh, few negative elements are present in the west and in the north of the filament channel. It seems that uh, flux cancellation between the diffuse active region flux with the uh, negative element might be the reason of several microfarings in the filament channel. To understand the magnetic structure in a large scale, uh, we looked into the uh, line of sight gong magnetograms, and we compared the uh, pillar position and brightenings. Um, here, these are the synoptic maps. This is one rotation earlier, and this one is one uh, during our observation. These are the STO stereo composite image uh, with uh, con contours of bright patches. Uh, we noticed that uh, there was an active region, one rotation earlier, that had diffused near to the filament system in previous 27 days. So uh, this confirms that uh, these brightenings are due to the uh, flux uh, cancellation between the positive and the negative flux. On the basis of uh, this magnetic structure, we uh, drew a simple sketch of our observation. Since our observations were made in a um, rising solar cycle, so we placed a negative polarity here at the polar part of the sun, polar region. This is the active region, positive flux here. And uh, actually, these observations are at the very high latitude of the sun. So these polarities are just to give an idea that, uh, just to give a feel which polarities are involved in the filament system. So uh, if you remember, in uh, introduction, I shown you a flux linkage model uh, for the formation of uh, polar current prominences. 
Here we have a situation that uh, with the arrival of uh, diffused active region flux and merging with the already formed chain is the reason for several uh, micro fraying and outflows in the filament channel. So uh, in this observation, uh, this diffuse active region flux plays an important role. It shows how the initial two unconnected bipoles connects due to the flux linkage between them. Uh, these uh, these stars shows the brightenings which we observed in the filament channel and these uh, F1, F2, F3 shows the pillar position. So how they create a longer chain of filaments. Uh, summary of my part one. Uh, stereo observations uh, show that the prominence pillars are separated by many tens of uh, megameters. They are connected with each other by dynamic bridges of cold and hot plasma that we can see in uh, 304-171 ratio images. Prominence pillars show the upflows with an average velocity of 15 kilometers per second. Uh, these observations are in agreement with the flux linkage model of uh, polycrown prominence. And uh, now the second part, uh, tornado-like prominence. A very interesting prominence tornado was observed by the STO on 25th September. Uh, there were many unopened, uh, unanswered questions. Uh, one of the important questions was that what is the triggering mechanism of the solar tornado? Uh, we looked into this event and uh, studied the triggering mechanism of the solar tornado. This is the prominence cavity system in uh, four different AIA channels. We observed that there was an active region near to the uh, prominence cavity system which was flaring on that day and uh, suspected to influence the prominence cavity system in some ways. So uh, for this again we used uh, stereo A data. Uh, here uh, prominence was observed on the southwest solar limb of the sun from STO at the same time it appeared uh, the southern hemisphere from stereo A images. Uh, these are the two different views of the prominence cavity system. Right one is observed by the STO and left one uh, observed by the stereo. This dashed line is the STO limb line and uh, here is the uh, this dark line represents the filament channel. This long solid arrow represents the uh, selected coordinates along this 3D point in space. It means this point, this plus point could be anywhere along this line. Uh, we can see this bright head of the tornado coincides with this long diagonal arrow here. Uh, active region appears here uh, from STO on the limb and uh, from stereo on the disc. Uh, there were three M-class flares on that day and all the three M-class flares were associated with CMEs and EUV waves. Uh, to see the onset flares and EUV wa uh, waves behavior, we created these running ratio images. Uh, these upper ones are uh, before the three flares and lower ones are the after the three flare. This is the active region, filament channel is here somewhere. As we can see after each flare there is a faint EUV wave front which is clearly visible here that sweeps over the filament channel and increased the tornado activity. This small arrow points the increase in activity in the filament channel. Third flare produced the most visible EUV wave front, and this is the flare which also triggered the tornado like activity on the top of the prominence. To investigate whether the activation could have been triggered by the flares, uh, we created uh, uh, two time series uh, images. Uh, one is <coughs> across the active region here, and other one is along the filament channel. Uh, this is the again difference map along this vertical line here. There are three flares at three different times. This red dash line highlights the flare times. And uh, this one is the uh, running, ma uh, running difference map along this horizontal line. Uh, we can see that after each flare, uh, there is an increase in uh, activity in the filament channel. During first flare, then it, it, there are perturbation. After second flare, it further increases after third flare. From uh, stereo images, from disk images, it is quite clear that all the three flares affected the prominence filament system. Now to see what's going on the limb, we can see in this movie, this is the STO 171 movie during the first flare. Uh, here is the first flare and then we can see there are clear oscillation in the prominence stem just after the flare here and at this time. Uh, now to see in detail, uh, we created a time series. Uh, this is uh, 
time series image along this first long dotted dash line here this one. Uh, here is the active region and here is the cavity and prominence and this one is the flare 1 here at this time and we can see that after flare 1 there are nice oscillation in the prominence stem and this lasts for one hour. This is the movie during second and third flare. In the beginning of this movie, there is a second flare, this one, and then there, okay, just wait, a second flare, and we can see prominence increase in high just after the second flare, and these tornado rotations start after the third flare, like here at this time, we can see. Uh, now, to see in details, I will show you a time series during second and third flare. Uh, this is a time series image along this middle line here, dashed one. Here is the active region and cavity prominence along this line, middle one here. And flare two is here. Oh, yes, I must mention here that SDO was under an eclipse uh, just before the second flare. Uh, we looked into swap data set to confirm because this was an important phase to check. It shows a clear relation between the flare and the uh, prominence activity. So we can see there is uh, arm-like extension in the prominence stem just after the second flare, this one. And during the third flare, this is the time series image along this solid line here. Here is the active region, active region loop, this one, cavity here, and then tornado here, also prominence tornado. What happens uh, during third flare? Active region expands during the third flare here. We can see the clear expansion of the active region towards the prominence cavity here. And during the expansion of the active region field, there is a sharp decrease in the cavity boundary here. At this time, we can see when the active region field swayed back towards the active region site after the flare, this cavity started to expand. Here at this boundary, we can see the cavity boundary is clearly expanding after the flare, which results in the expansion of prominence field lines. Prominence grew in height when cavity started to expand. So these helical field lines get spaced, and the plasma started to move along these helical field lines, which appear as a tornado-like activity on the top of the prominence. Sorry? No, you can't see field lines, but you can see before this flare, prominence uh, was not, uh, tornado activity, activity was not start. Like in this movie, I can show you again. Here. Here is third flare, and these rotations start just after this flare. Uh, this is the model of our observation. Um, we assume, in this model, we assume that cavity is in the potential state and active region is in the non-potential state due to the free magnetic energy stored in it. After the flare, active region uh, field contracts due to the loss of free magnetic energy, which results in the decrease of magnetic pressure at the flare site. The neighboring cavity, due to its superior magnetic pressure than the flare site, is started to expand towards the flare site. Here we can see. Uh, which results in the uh, decrease of magnetic pressure inside the cavity. Oh, sorry, increased. Um, uh, the cavity expands, uh, the helical field lines uh, get spaced, and they grew in height. The plasma started to move in these field lines, which appear as a tornado-like activity. So basically, a tornado is the uh, response of the uh, cavity expansion. Uh, this is a summary uh, uh, of this part. Uh, uh, there are three flares from this active region. All the three flares affected the prominence cavity system. Tornado-like rotations start after the second flare. Uh, prominence cavity expands after the third flare and accelerate the tornado motions on the top of the prominence. A plausible mechanism is the contraction of the active region coronal field through the loss of magnetic energy after the flares. Uh, a prominence filament, now in this part I will show you a prominence filament eruption uh, which is triggered by a series of eight homologous flares. Um, first of all, I will give you a brief introduction about homologous flare. What are homologous flares? These are the flares that occur repetitively from the same active region and are having a common pattern of development.
For example, in this image, we can see uh, there are three different homologous flares at three different times, and they all are having a similar shape and morphology. These flares were observed by the SEO on the southeast solar limb of the sun on 16 June. At the same time, they appeared on the uh, southern hemisphere from these stereo B images. So we uh, combined the observation and studied the event. Uh, this is the active region that produced eight homologous flares. This is the Gauss plot. We identified eight peaks during eight flares from this active region. Uh, there were several other peaks which are visible in this time period. Uh, these are from the uh, other active regions we have checked. As we can see, they all, all, eight, all the eight flares uh, are mainly B and C class flares. And these all eight flares were accompanied by the confined eruptions. There is one more flare at the end of the day, F9, flare 9. This I will show you in my later slides. These are the two different views of the active region. Uh, this right one is observed by the stereo and left one is observed by the STO. We noticed that there was a prominence cavity system near to the active region. Here we can see filament and prominence is dark, which is magnetically connected to the flaring site. Cavity is only visible for a couple of hours in 211 images. Here we can see prominence and surrounding cavity. Uh, one of the foot points of the filament is anchored in the active region. Other one is the uh, away from the active region in the quiet sun, somewhere here. Uh, this is the STO limb line. Uh, with the help of this limb line, we can see that uh, other foot point of the prominence is beyond the STO limb line. Uh, this hot stuff is the, this bright stuff is the hot material which ejects during a series of eight eruption and disturbs the overall stability of the filament system. I'm going to call it as a bright ejector because it ejects during the eight eruption, but it is trapped within the field of the prominence filament cavity system and that material does not leave the sun uh, like uh, as happen in um, ejective eruptions. So, we are calling it as an ejector. Um, there were eight flares and all the eight flares were associated with confined eruptions and they are having a common pattern of development. In this movie, we can see this movie is for two days from 16 to 17 June. This is 193 uh, STO images, this one stereo B. In the beginning, uh, the prominence is not is here, it is not clearly visible. There is a brightening at the flaring location during flares here, which is followed by the this hot followed by the ejection of hot material, this one. And each time uh, this hot material interacted with the prominence filament cavity system, which results in the expansion of prominence in some significant steps. In the stereo images, we can see there is a junction of material and it hits the filament and disturbs the stability of that system. At the end, with the last flare, this prominence erupts, but the material falls back towards the solar surface. Uh, to see the relation between the uh, prominence uh, and uh, eight flares, uh, we created a high distance time series image along this fiducial line uh, from 16 to 17 June. Uh, here is the prominence trajectory. Uh, all the eight flares are marked from F1 to F8. These bright vertical lines, these ones, uh, it represents the hot material that ejects during a series of eight eruptions while interacting with the prominence here. So we can see there are some noticeable jumps at the prominence trajectory, for example, after F4, F6, and F7. Uh, we notice that there is a slow rise motion in the prominence trajectory which starts up after the flare 7 here and then followed by a relatively flat plateau and then again there is a slow rise. In this phase prominence moves with an uh, average velocity of 1 kilometers, 1 kilometer per second and this slow rise phase lasts for 6 to 7 hours. Then there is a sudden jump in the prominence trajectory just after flare F7. Prominence entered in its fast rise phase, uh, phase and it started to rise uh, with faster speed. It reaches to a maximum height before becoming a confined eruption. After flare 8, prominence material drains backward to the solar surface. Similar kind of behavior has been observed in the stereo images. This is a high time plot along this dashed line here. 
and we can see there is a slow rise after phase 6 and uh, fast rise after phase 7 and then prominence falls back towards the solar surface because it is a confined eruption. Uh, to see the relation uh, between the prominence eruption, uh, we created a time distance image along uh, this line here. This is during 7th and 8th flare. Prominence completely detached from the solar surface after flare 7 at this time. Uh, after flare 7, we observed a small brightening at the top of the prominence and then there are downflows after this. The prominence material falls back towards the solar surface. Possibly, the overlaying field lines does not allow the material to go outwards. In this movie, we can see uh, there is a no opening in the overlaying field lines here in the beginning. So, this eruption occurs inside an enveloping system of loops as typically happens in case of uh, confined eruptions. But after this prominence eruption, these overlaying field lines started to expand slowly, these ones which are marked here with these white arrows. Here we can see the nice expansion at this time, mm, like now at this, this one, uh, which is uh, followed by a weak dimming on the disk images as well, on, uh, as, well as on the uh, limb images. This is a base difference image uh, along this dash line here. Uh, weak dimming is visible just after flare eight here. Um, the last homologous flare completely removed the field above the active region and triggers the final eruption. That was not a confined eruption unlike the first eight eruption. This was an ejective eruption which results in a strong dimming and a CME from that region. Uh, to see the magnetic structure of this um, prominence filament system, we looked into the line of sight magnetograms two days later when this active region was on the SDO disk. On the basis of this magnetic uh, structure, we drew a sketch of our observation to summarize it. Uh, it shows the evolution of the event on the basis of SDO and uh, stereo observation. Here is the active region field with negative and positive polarity. Uh, prominence is uh, shown here in brown color, uh, which is sitting above the polarity inversion line, this dashed one. And this green tongue represents the hot material that ejects during a series of eight eruptions. And these ones are the uh, overlaying loops above the prominence filament system. This scenario is during the seventh and eighth flare. Overlaying field lines started to expand after the prominence eruption, or not, not sorry, after the eruption. Uh, First, overlaying field lines started to expand, uh, which results in the expansion of prominence field. But after that brightening, uh, prominence falls back toward the solar surface. These field lines continue to expand, which results in a weak dimming uh, at the near to the active region. Uh, the complete removal of this uh, overlaying field line um, allowed the allows the uh, last eruption to escape from the uh, core of the active region without being confined. So, there was a last eruption uh, from the active region that was an ejective eruption. Uh, this is a version of a uh, lid removal mechanism where the first eruption removes the overlaying lid so called fields that allow the second eruption to begin via the lid removal mechanism. Here we have a situation that the last homologous flare removed the overlaying field lines that allowed the uh, that allowed the uh, ejective eruption to occur with the CME. So from our observation, we speculate that uh, the a series of eight eruption continuously destabilized the prominence filament system and opened the coronal field via the lid removal mechanism. In summary, uh, all the eight eruptions continuously disrupted the prominence filament cavity system. All the eight eruptions were mainly confined. A final ejective eruption occurred in the core of the active region after the complete removal of overlaying field lines. Possible scenario is that uh, the eight eruptions gradually destabilized the prominence filament cavity system and removed the field above the active region leading to the CME via the lid removal mechanism. Um, conclusions uh, for the overall talk, uh, the evolution of polychron prominence uh, with respect to the magnetic field seems to agree with the flux linkage model. 
solar tornado is the dynamical response of the helical prominence field to the gravity expansion. The series of eight homologous flares destabilized the prominence filament cavity system and opened the coronal field leading to the CME via the lead removal mechanism. These observational investigations provide useful constraint for theoretical prominence models. That's all. Thank you. In tornado? Yeah. No, you can't see that yeah, in we'll movies. Because as we know that prominence is always lie in helical field lines. So what happens here? Here. Before uh, yes. can you draw it with your finger? Where? Oh yeah. You can't, you can't see in uh, helical field lines in movies, but it's. Yeah. 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 Supposition, belief, or well, we don't have measurements of fields. So until we measure the field, it's not proven. But it, it's a reasonable assumption that it's a low beta plasma following field lines in the corona, and and the uh, the models of uh, uh, coronal cavities as well rely on this helical flux rope to achieve that density. Uh, Self-consistent model and observation, but until we have the actual measurement, yeah, we can't say. And do you agree with that, Sarah? Yeah, I'd agree. And I'd say we actually can say a little more because we have observations of the linear polarization and the cavity That's exactly right. this region. And if it was just um, a non helical structure, you would expect to have a V van Vleck for the arcade field. But instead, you get a V at the top where the arcade is. And in this region where she's looking, where you see that spinning motion, you have a dark linear polarization feature consistent with uh, axial flux rope type field. So there are actual observations. Axial by axial, now you mean vertical. I mean, along the line of sight. Along the line, but this thing is vertical or is horizontal? Well, you could have to imagine like a slinky going around the sun, and we're looking at a cross section of the slinky. And the spinning motion is going along an axis, which is into the plane. It'll be horizontal. Yeah. Horizontal. Into the plane of the screen. Yeah. Yes. So there's a lot of mutual evidence, including I think these spinning motions that imply that there's there's helical fields. Basically, it's the expansion of the helical field lines in the cavity. That drives we, the motion. Yes. Yeah. And plasma is moving along these field lines. That's why it looks like tornado type activity. Yeah. Based on the time delay between the disturbance from here, here, you sort of can estimate the open speed. Do you have a uh, No. I, I would caution against calling these solar tornadoes because there is another class of more vertically oriented rotating structures, which are uh, which are in the photosphere, you mean to say? Well, no, there, there's even prominence observations. Uh -huh. on, but Sven Biedermeyer Baum's work on the chromospheric uh, uh, rotations, which they've then traced up into into the in transition region as well, shows that there are these vertically structured spinning uh -huh. structures, and they've called those tornadoes. This is more. This is like a horizontal tornado, but in, in this, it, in the it, it's confusing between those two. So. Given that the other one is a vertical structure, probably pressure driven by convection, mm. like a terrestrial tornado, yeah, I'd yeah. probably give primacy to that description rather than this one. But mm -hmm. it's up, up for okay. debate. Um, on your last example at the end, I was wondering what you think the main source is for the dynamical motion of the CME. Do you think it's down the fields that are down close? The reason, or do you think it's the overlying chrono fields that are driving this thing out? Where is it skimming this energy to come out? Uh, sorry, can you repeat, please? On your last example? Yeah, just let um, me open it. You have a CME that gets ejected out? Yeah. So that's getting its emotional energy from somewhere. Do you think it's from the active region? It's field? from the active, yeah, we think it's from the active region. It's the overlying chrono fields that are doing much 
Um, they just no. have to open and then they're then, then, yes. They're not it's just basically the opening of these overlaying field lines, and there is a junction of CME. Mm. Yeah, it's got a follow up question on that. Um, uh, another mechanism that people have argued for is the torus instability that when a prominence reaches a certain height, it becomes unstable to an ideal instability mm -hmm. um, of the expansion of a flux rope. And if that's the structure that's in the cavity, then that would be something that might be expected. And you showed a rise of the filament mm -hmm. in the time before the eruption. Have you done any sort of, um, you can actually take a look at that height at which it erupts and look at what a potential extrapolation would expect and, and come up with an index to compare to the torus instability. That's, have, have you looked at that at all? Yeah, we didn't, but we can. For, yeah. Yes, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. It's a picky comment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't take it seriously. <laughs> so, uh, I would like to know why are you are not using are you using a vector magnetogram for HMI, especially in the polar crown mm -hmm. when the projection effect is yeah. important and you are using just the magnetograms, mm -hmm. but you have the full magnetic field vector. Yeah, I think uh, vector magnetograms are available now, and these observations when I. Uh, did it's two years back, so. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, thank you. And even magnetograms, we are looking just uh, I think uh, seven to ten days earlier, when this uh, active uh, system was on the disk, not on the limb, because my all observations are on the limb. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's useful. Mm, yeah, for sure. Like in, even in yeah.